For the longest time, NAC has been used exclusively as a mucolyticum or expectorant. In fact, in Europe, NAC is the number one over-the-counter cough remedy since the 1980s. Mostly used in drinkable form as effervescent tablets, NAC has the ability to reduce the viscosity of mucus, which helps clearing of mucus from the airways. It does that by breaking so-called disulfur bridges in the long mucopolysaccharide chains that our phlegm is made of. More bridges between these long phlegm molecules mean more viscous, sticky phlegm. And this ability to break the bridges makes NAC very valuable in any respiratory symptom management um, where congestion occurs, you know, like bronchitis, pneumonia, but also in any viral infection affecting the nasal passages, bronchioles, and lungs, including COVID-19. NAC is also very helpful in painful sinus infections where the sinuses are pulsing painfully because of phlegm. Patients suffering from cystic fibrosis commonly use NAC by inhalation to potently help loosen the mucus covering the lungs and bronchioles. Inhalation is practically a topical application of NAC right where it's needed. But NAC does so much more than just thinning our mucus. It protects the lungs from damaging effects of inhaled toxins. And in, uh, it is one of the three building blocks that form glutathione. Those are glycine, glutamine, and cysteine. We could go into great detail of explaining the pathways that are necessary to make glutathione, uh, including the SAM cycle and also the two key enzymes involved, glutathione S transferase and gamma glutamyl transferase. Uh, but I think that I would make you quickly stare into space and <laughs> actually lose you doing that. But here are the most important vitamin cofactors uh, for the cellular production of glutathione. And these are methyl B12, betaine, riboflavin, uh, folic acid in its active uh, form, methyl MTHF, lipoic acid, and vitamin C. Um, but one nutrient clearly sticks out strongly in this bigger picture, and that is selenium. Because it's involved in recycling glutathione after it got used. Now, you can imagine it is much more efficient to reuse a molecule rather than having to rebuild it all over again from scratch. Selenium does that for glutathione. Um, selenium, especially when available in the form it travels best in our system, selenomethionine, helps regenerate oxidized glutathione back into its active, reduced form, often called GSH, GSH or reduced glutathione. You know? So what does glutathione actually do for us? Imagine water-soluble antioxidants like vitamin C, they float around as scavengers in our blood and lymph system. Fat-soluble uh, antioxidants like vitamin A, D, E, or K protect the cell membranes. But glutathione works inside the cells and all over the body, not just uh, the lungs. Uh, it helps break down free radicals, regenerate vitamin C and E, remove mercury from the brain, support immune function, and form reproductive cells like sperm. Uh, it helps li liver and gallbladder to deal with fats, reduces uh, cell damage in the liver, uh, within liver disease, and also reverses liver damage from regular Tylenol use. No? It improves insulin sensitivity and reduces symptoms uh, of Parkinson's disease. And for COVID, it works as an anti-inflammatory, uh, reducing cellular damage, and has clearly shown to suppress the cytokine storm in the lungs after COVID-19 infection. But all this only works if systemic glutathione levels are already present before or when COVID infects the body. One study concluded that proper cellular glutathione levels dramatically reduced hospital admission rates, the need for ICU ventilation, and mortality overall. And that's a long list of uh, beneficial effects of NAC 
And uh, these were just the most important functions and effects of glutathione in our system. So now on to dosing of NAC, N-acetylcysteine. An immune system requires uh, the variety of immune relevant nutrients to be present before the viral infection hits the body. You know? and these are vitamin D3, all the B vitamins, zinc, selenium, vitamin C, and magnesium glycinate. Be the glycinate because it provides glycine, also for glutathione production and many other important functions in our system. Um, for someone starting to use NAC as a preventative measure for the first time, take one capsule, 600 milligrams, twice a day with food for about five days to replenish your system and allow rebuilding glutathione. And then you can cut back to just one capsule a day as maintenance dose. No? For somebody already dealing with mucus and phlegm building up and it's becoming more sticky and harder to move, uh, take one capsule of the 600 milligrams three times a day with food and drink lots of hot herbal teas like chamomile and fennel. Chamomile is also a fantastic anti-inflammatory. Fennel seed is a fantastic broncholuticum. It relaxes the bronchi bronchioles, um, the bronchial muscles. And actually the heat of the tea going down the esophagus right next to the windpipe also helps loosen phlegm and with that helps clear the airways. No? So in essence, NAC and cyanomethionine clearly belong together and are two of the most important nutrients for cellular health and immune health. One other question I get once in a while is, why are your zinc and copper products dosed lower than many other brands? Well, firstly here, because we're using the amino acid salt of zinc and copper glycinate, we achieve much better bioavailability, which means better absorption from the gut into the blood. So we don't need to use as much per capsule to begin with. But much more importantly, over the 25 years of being a compounding pharmacist in Ottawa, um, I have facilitated and managed thousands of hair mineral tests for customers. And what I observed with these tests, specifically for zinc and copper, was that individuals that found low levels of these two minerals in, the hair, in their hair to begin with, and then started using supplementation with 50 to 100 milligrams of zinc or 2 to 4 milligrams of copper per day, came back in their follow-up tests with severely overshooting uh, results for zinc and copper. So I took that to heart when I formulated my zinc glycinate and copper glycinate products. The goal was to provide a daily dose that will simply maintain your systemic levels where they should be and not create an opposite overshooting disbalance. No? A person that is starting out with either zinc or copper for the first time would start using two of my capsules per day for just a couple of weeks and then dose down to maintenance after that with just one caps per day ongoing. Simple as that. While zinc is a nutrient that could be considered year-round if it's dosed properly and not too high, uh, copper is a true trace element and many of my practitioner friends, myself included, um, recommend to use it for just three to four months out of the year. Easiest way, for example, is to mark your smartphone calendars uh, so that October, January, April and July are copper months. And if you are implementing this kind of a regular rotation of on copper, off copper, then one capsule a day for these two months per year should cover your requirements perfectly. So here you have it. <laughs> There's always a good reason why I do what I do. Uh, thank you for listening and uh, see you next time. Thank you.